from Fox 55 Sports, this is The Locker Room. Good evening and a snowy evening. And <laughs> welcome inside the locker room, everyone, alongside my very cold partner, Peter Hood. My it's name warm is in, warm in here, though. Justin Prince. Yeah, it is. Thank God. Too hot for me. Yeah. Thanks for spending part of this snowy Friday you sweat night easy, with though. us. I do. Like when we were, we, we, we were eating all the meats earlier, you got the meat sweats. I sweat when I see a cheeseburger, let's be real. Now you got the, uh, the studio sweats. Yeah. Anyway. Pete, it, it might look like Antarctica out there right now, but thankfully, basketball sport that's played indoors, which means high school hoops. Still a go for tonight. Yeah, uh, made for some interesting travel. <laughs> you and I uh, yes. went to some faraway places, and it took us uh, quite a bit of time to get back to the, uh, the studio. I probably got back about five minutes ago, but here we are. Yeah, normally we begin the show with whatever the best game in the SAC is on any given Friday night. Tonight, though, again, we venture out a little bit further into our viewing area to places like Topeka and Bern as conference tournaments continue to our north and to our south. We begin though with the NECC semifinal action on the boys' side as 2A number 16 Westview plays host to number seven Prairie Heights. You knew this would be a good one and it lived up to the hype. Fast start for the Warriors. First quarter, Charlie Yoder, one of the best scorers in the state, showing you why. Westview goes up seven to nothing. Later in the first, beautiful basketball right here. Every guy in white touches the rock. Blake Egley knocks down the three. It's 13 to two Westview, but the Panthers came to play Prince off the offensive rebound. They get it to Elijah Malone, the big fella. He's a load to handle down there. He's a big dude. For the easy deuce, he's about your size. And then it's Brandon Chrisley stepping into the triple with confidence. Prairie Heights clawing their way back into it. Then just before the end of the first quarter, you're going to see Ethan Hoover connect on a long two. That trims the deficit to six. Prairie Heights comes back to win prints 47 to 46, the final on an Elijah Malone free throw in the final. Final seconds. Gotta love it. I love this time of year. So the Panthers move on to tomorrow night's championship game at Garrett. They await the winner of Churubusco versus Central Noble, and these two rivals certainly got after it tonight. Cougars up 11 when we pick this one up late third quarter, but here come the Eagles. Hunter Perlick drives and scores, cut the lead down to nine moments later. Off the inbound, Landon Jordan showing you some of his skills down by the bucket, letting his opponents know about it too. Yeah, but they, they, they were chirping a little bit. Got a couple guys, a couple fans got kicked out. It was wild up there. Hey, basketball. Yeah. But as Logan Gard and the Cougars getting the last laugh tonight, Gard, the mean two-handed flush. You're going to get another look at that one. A place so nice, you're just going to have to see it twice. As for the first time since 1977, Central Noble is on to the NECC championship with a 63-57 win. How about that? Congrats, Over Busco. congrats to John Bodia staying at Central Noble. Lady Cougars playing host to Angola. Always a good game when these two teams may, uh, meet up, and that was, again, the case tonight. A back-and-forth affair from the jump. Pick it up late first quarter. Cor first quarter. Lydia Andrews bangs the corner three to put the Cougars up by three, but the Hornets have an answer. Off the inbound, they fake the handoff to Hannah Knoll. Lauren Leach takes it herself for two. Deficit down to one. Moments later, the nice look ahead in transition. Allie Lawrence finds Danielle Dunham for two more. Angola takes the lead, but then Prince with time winding down in the Hi, first. I think we've got a top play nominee here. I think so. Maddie Weiss, the freshman. 
That'll work. Banks went in at the buzzer plus the foul. She'd missed the free throw, seeing up two after one. It was tied all night again, but Kayla Finstermaker and the Hornets able to hold on for a 47 to 45 win. Prince, tell us who they're going to see tomorrow night. You weren't lying when you said good games between those ones. Yeah. All the NECC games were great yeah. tonight. Final stop in the NECC comes back at Westview. Battle of the Birds, Fremont Eagles taking on the Fairfield Falcons. It's a one-point game when we pick this one up fourth quarter. Fairfield up one, actually make it four. Kara Kitson knocks down the triple. Moments later, the skip pass from the corner goes to a wide-open Brooke Sanchez. And you can't leave her that open, kids. Ring up three more. She's fired up. Rightfully so, Fairfield opens up a seven-point cushion. Fremont calls timeout, but they couldn't get anything going offensively the rest of the game. Falcons force the turnover, leads to a layup from Kitson on the other end. Fairfield pulls away. They win this one 35-22. They'll meet Angola in the championship tomorrow. So we stick with the hoops now, but head a little bit further south. The NECC tourney, not the only one making headlines this week, is it, Pete? No, absolutely not. It's no disservice to the NECC by any means, but when an in-season conference tourney has been going on for nearly a century, yeah. you got to give credit where credit is due. The ACAC tourney tipped off earlier this week. The boys celebrating the 97th such edition, the girls with their 46th tonight. The semifinals down south. Yeah, and we start down at the Star Dome. The Star Fires, your host, they're taking on Woodland. Under a minute to go in the first quarter. Game tied up at 13. Aiden Warner, good basketball player, good football player, good athlete. Pretty stroke from three. Net barely moves. Stars he go does it up all, man. He Kickers. Really does. Next trip down the court. Just a few ticks left in the quarter. James Arnold, that's a TPN. Three ball puts South Adams up six after one. Warriors would not budge all night long. Second quarter, Aiden Bain in the drive and bucket. Next possession, Mitch Mendenhall says, well, hey, if you're going to give it to me, I'll take it. He had 16. Three ball cuts the deficit to one. Stars had all the answers in the first half, though. Arnold, pure from the corner from deep again. He had 17 on the night. South Adams up four at recess, but... The Warriors rally in the second wow. half. They win 57 to 54. They are on to the ACAC title game tomorrow. It's impressive. Go into the Star Dome and, and beat the Starfires. So Woodland will get the winner of the Adams Central Southern Wells matchup just down the road in Monroe. All Adams Central in the early going. Ben Voro, speaking of good football players, yeah. down low. That pushes the Jets lead to 12. Couple possessions later, you're going to see Voral again. This time, the strong take to the rack that pushes the AC lead out to 12 again. Southern Wells would close the quarter on a big run, though. Dylan Junk, three ball from straight away. You can count that. Lead to six. Later on, it's Junk again, this time from the corner. You better guard him from out there. Yeah. That cuts the AC lead down to five after three, but Adam Central hangs on to win this thing 49-42, so they'll face Woodland in the championship down at the Stardome tomorrow night. Same matchup on the girls' side. The host Jets, they're taking on Southern Wells. Both teams trading buckets to start this one. Madison Bebout knocks down the triple to start the scoring. The announcer's excited, as you can hear. Right back the other way, Millie Price answers three ball of her own ties things up but the Jets would fly away with things from there. Carly Holly nice up and under finish for two. Then AC they're going to clean the offensive glass and it's going to end in a Carly Black bucket and you know and then how about just for good measure Olivia Dalrymple is going to join the fun. She runs in a tray ball of her own. AC leading by nine after one. Sure. They run away with this one. Jets fly into the title game with a 69-24 to 24 victory. So the Jets get the winner of the other semifinal between Woodland and Bluffton at the Star Dome. And the Warriors were cruising early in the third. Addie Bayman, she is tough to so handle. Good. Rifles the ball into Ava Smith down low for the layup. Later on in transition, Bayman dishing again, this time to Taya Kitzmiller on the break. Woodland goes up 15. Bluffton able to make a little bit of a pushback before the end of the third. Olivia King, seems like she's been there forever. Yeah. Gets to lay up, lay up to drop. 
Then it's Amy Boots, another girl that's been there a while, with the short jumper. Team high nine for her. Tigers down 12, though, after three. Bayman and the Warriors just too much tonight, Prince. You saw the passing. She can score it, too. How about a game high 19 for the senior? Woodland moves on to the championship game, 50 to 24, the final. Final stop of the night comes at Homestead, and well, this is about the only play you'll have to see from this one. John Barnes Jr., three-quarter court, buckets, Snyder knocks off the Spartans, 53-52. Panthers are now tied atop the SAC standings with Homestead, Carroll, and Lures, all four teams, three and one in SAC play, Pete. And uh, surprise, surprise, Prince, our play of the night. <laughs> I feel like I've seen this before. I think so. John Barnes Jr., quarterback on the football field. Young man's got a full-ride scholarship, I believe, to, to Rose Holman, one of the best engineering schools in the country, and all he does is hit half-court buzzer beaters on the basketball court. Good to be John Barnes, and good to be the Snyder Panthers. Two wins over Homestead yeah. in just the last few weeks. So uh, impressive for yeah. the Panthers. Wish Absolutely. we could have been at that one tonight. Was in our plans. Obviously, the weather kind of derailed some yeah. things, but... Uh, Man, that's highlight of the season so far, I would say. I tell you what, the SAC was fun last year. Obviously, we had that three-way tie atop the, t the conference, and if anything proves it uh, from the start of this year, it's going to be fun down the stretch again. Yeah, uh, obviously, you know, we were busy, uh, you know, up north and down south tonight, but uh, kind of a crazy night yeah. in the SAC. A couple games go to overtime. You saw that buzzer beater. Uh, Bishop Lures boys. Topping Carroll. Beat Carroll. Um, a really impressive win for Fonzo White and company. So a lot of teams right yeah. now tied at the top of the SAC standings. And um, we'll get back to those SAC doubleheaders next week. And it'll be interesting to see kind of where things go down the stretch. But uh, tomorrow night, we got the ACAC championships, the NECC championships. Weather permitting. Weather permitting. <laughs> Hopefully we can get these roads clear off and the, uh, the weather cooperates tomorrow. But looking forward to, uh, to those tomorrow night. No doubt about it.